<laughs> this is Leisha Holmes and I'm your host on the Recruiters Recruitment Podcast and I am really, really thrilled and honoured to be joined today by a guest who's all the way over in America. He's actually based over in Ohio. I don't think we've reached Ohio yet. So to our global community, please welcome Ben Gadouli, who was name I got right first time. Yeah. And he is the lead recruiter at LinkedIn. And also, I believe you're a personal trainer, which we haven't talked about. Yes, yes, yes. But welcome to you today, Ben. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Just getting my morning started here in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and just thankful to be on the show. Glad that uh, you invited me. And uh, looking forward to the conversation. Me too. And yeah, a huge thank you to, I think it's David Bernstein, who we have as a mutual yes. connection, who messaged yes. me to suggest you as a guest. And having spoken to you off camera before we've pressed record, I'm really pleased I did it. Because I think that there's so many people that are going to be listening who are, are all around the world, who are going to be very curious to know what best practice looks like for where we all are all sat now. If you've clicked on this link, I bet you're sat on LinkedIn. And that's where you work, of course. But for those who don't net, yet know you, tell us a little bit about yourself, Ben. Yep. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Ben Gaduli. I've been a recruiter at LinkedIn for about a year now. Um, previously, I was at Amazon for about four and a half years. Um, and then prior to my uh, introduction to tech and, and recruiting, uh, I was a professional football player um, for the St. Louis Rams, a little bit with the New York Giants. Um, Career didn't last as long as I would like it to. That's just kind of part of the business, um, you know, in professional sports. So then it's like, you know, you kind of try to figure out the next step. Um, so it's all been kind of a faith journey and trying to piece it together, you know, one, you know, one opportunity at a time, right? Like whatever presents itself. So I uh, got into sales after football and, and did car sales, which kind of um, prepared me for recruiting, right? Like closing deals, closing offers. Um, and with that, it was always face to face, right? Like, you know, the customer's right there. Um, you're kind of going over pricing and, and uh, payment options and things. So, you know, little did I know, you know, that work there uh, kind of prepared me for recruiting. Um, and I was happened to, or I had the opportunity to uh, go to a uh, Bridge to Success event that the NFL um, put together for guys like myself who, you know, were transitioning out of football and trying to figure out what to do with the rest of their lives as far as career. Um, so there's a networking event, you know, you had breakout sessions and, um, you know, I was able to eat, meet the Amazon recruiter at that network event, uh, interviewed with the recruiter there. Uh, then they flew me out to Seattle, interviewed at the headquarters, you know, out there um, for Amazon. Um, and then the rest is history, kind of moved the whole family out to Seattle um, then actually, you know, I onboarded, you know, my manager saw that I was, you know, delivering results, kind of doing a good job. Um, and at the time, Amazon was helping my wife with like job placement, you know, as part of like relocation package, right? Because okay. we we're moving from Ohio all the way out to the Pacific Northwest to Seattle, which is a very long move. You know, even though it's within the U.S., it's still a very long move. Um, so they were helping her with job placement. Uh, she was a teacher. Um, and they're trying to help her get interviews for some of the local schools there in Seattle. Long story short, uh, you know, I was delivering results pretty quickly. Uh, so my manager at the time at Amazon said, hey, you know, I know job placement's still trying to help your wife get a teaching job. Would she also be interested in, you know, being a recruiter at Amazon? Yeah. So I was like, well, you know what? I never thought about it, never asked. Um, she's still, you know, kind of thinking about teaching. So, you know, Aster, uh, you know, fast forward, she also started working at Amazon too. So um, I, I moved out there uh, by myself while uh, my wife and the kids were still back here in school. Um, she interviewed, uh, then they flew her out. Uh, she did well. And then so by the time the whole family moved out, we were both already employees at Amazon. Oh, I love that story. <laughs> yeah. family, family affair, no, I love it. And actually there'll be a lot of people listening who, May and we have had previous guests on who've come from a sporting background, who've maybe gone professional, semi professional, um, and even those who've played at an amateur level. And it actually is a very, very good mindset to come from because generally speaking, if you play any kind of sport, you are you are always striving for better and you're always looking at results and you right. 
generally speaking, you are collaborative, even if you play a solo sport like tennis, for example, you're still part of the squad. So I think it is actually going to be something that is going to really apply to a lot of our audience. So thank you for sharing your, your story. And it's uh, lovely to hear that you've got, you know, a nice family behind you, which is always, always good to have. So you have worked for two of the biggest tech names in the world, literally, yes. Amazon and LinkedIn. So we are all going to look to you to see what you're doing. And, you know, I think that there are going to be a lot of people interested to hear what your answers are to these questions. So all if right. you were talking to potential job seekers right now and candidates, what do you think they should be doing to stand out on LinkedIn right now? To stand out on LinkedIn right now, I would uh, recommend any candidates to make sure they have their skills properly advertised on LinkedIn. Make it easy for recruiters to see, you know, what your tech stack is, what your priority or what your strengths are as far as like, do you want to be a front end engineer? Do you like back end, you know, working on coding? Um, do you prefer full stack, right? Are you a project manager? Are you a people manager, right? So, um, you know, in tech, as you look across different companies and startups, uh, candidates and job titles can involve wearing a lot of hats, right? A lot of different responsibilities. So sometimes for like, you know, my end as the recruiter, you're trying to figure out like, you know, is this candidate the right fit for my job? You know, my role is a front end focused role looking at this candidate's profile. I, you know, I can't really tell if they'd be interested or not. Um, so give your recruiters uh, a very clear picture of, of your skill set, yeah. your strengths, um, you know, what your focus is. So that way, you know, we're all kind of living in this fast paced world and we don't want to just spin our wheels, right? So it's like, you know, and, and we still do because that's part of it, right? Like getting on calls, you know, kind of going through job descriptions, you know, listening to the candidate's career progression and kind of seeing if we're on the same page, right? Like oh. the, the seniority, you know, um, leadership aspect of it. Is this a good step in your career, right? So unfortunately, you know, sometimes on both ends, you know, it's not a match, right? With what the candidate's looking for and what we're looking for in a specific role, um, so, you know, we want to try to avoid and limit that as much as possible for both parties, right, for the, for the candidate seeking a new opportunity and for your recruiter on the other end trying to figure out, you know, who we're going to get in the pipeline here. Um, so make sure that your uh, profile on LinkedIn or even your resume is very uh, specific, right, as far as the, the skill set, your focus, um, and then another thing I would always uh, kind of recommend or, or feel like is a trend that I see for candidates that are successful is the candidates who can uh, kind of work on their own independently, right? right? I mean, we're, we're, we're transitioning to more of this remote world. Yep. So uh, a lot of the feedback sometimes that you get during interview processes or, you know, some of the, I guess, red flags or concerns during interview processes um, when it comes to like technical skills and coding is that, you know, if an interviewer feels like they had to give you so many hints or basically give you the solution, and then maybe that makes them feel like, well, you know, this candidate may not work well independently, right? Because it's like, you know, if we have to be there to, uh, you know, show them every step of the way and hold their hand, you know, as far as coming up with every solution, then maybe, you know, this isn't the right environment or, you know, maybe this uh, remote setup may not be, you know, setting you up for success, right? So being able to demonstrate that you can work independently um, and then collaborate when you need to, right? Take the feedback, um, you know, make the adjustments um, and, and show your manager that, you know, you can take feedback make an improvement and not really repeat the same mistakes. Um, so, so yeah, I would say just in, in short, uh, candidates that can show that they can work independently now uh, can kind of separate themselves from, from the rest of the pack. It's really useful actually. And, you know, maybe some people might be thinking, why on earth have I asked that question? But actually it's our role as recruiters to ensure that our candidates look as attractive as possible when we're speaking to our clients. And the first thing that anyone will do is go and look on their LinkedIn. So I think it's really useful and, you know, obviously there's, you've got all your Boolean searches, but actually making sure that you take responsibility for what you've got as content on there. Um, and I agree with what you're saying, you know, the world has transformed, rightfully so, it's hybrid, you know, 
for a lot of industries that can't work we appreciate that with social work and education and you know there are a number of different logistics etc but for those sectors that have got, got the capability but how does somebody show that on their LinkedIn that they can work independently do they literally put that on their personal statement do you think or? Uh, I, I guess that would be a skill set that you have to acquire on your own through experience um, right yeah, so it's cool. like and again that's a little bit harder for like junior engineers right so yeah. it's like uh, getting that uh, experience and you know a lot of times you know even a candidate from a startup that may have been in a startup environment for three or four years in the industry and now they come to interview at Amazon or LinkedIn for like a more senior engineering position again a lot of the feedback sometimes will be you know scalability concerns the working independently concerns yeah. um, so I, I don't know how you would show that on a resume I would say it's more of just a skill set for candidates to keep in mind that they want to basically demonstrate throughout their interview process. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I agree with you there. I think that's the only way that you can answer that. I just didn't know if you had a, a secret formula for it. So flipping it to hiring companies, which of course is everyone's biggest headache because we are in this bubble. And even if we hit some sort of recession over here in the UK, we're talking about it for later 2022. Um, but it's still going to be talent short in most markets. So for hiring companies, why do you, I mean, in terms of the value proposition that we talk about, what are companies like LinkedIn doing? So you as an employer, what are you doing to set yourselves apart from other tech companies? And then what can we then learn to encourage our companies to do to ensure that you stand out as an employer of choice, basically? Sure. Yeah, so I would say uh, we're trying to streamline our interview processes, right? Uh, some of these interview processes drag on for way too long, right? It's like multiple rounds, multiple sessions of phone screens, uh, and then delays in the feedback and getting results to the candidates. Um, so we're really trying to streamline our processes, get candidates their results, and you know update them as soon as possible after their interviews. Uh, most of our screening sessions just have one phone interview, right? So it's like one 60 minute, you know, uh, phone screen. As long as the feedback is positive on that, you know, we can move you forward to the virtual on-site interview modules. Um, that gives us more interview opportunities through Zoom uh, with the virtual interview modules. Um, so it does allow us to streamline and interview a lot of candidates. Um, but again, I, you miss out on a little bit of that personal touch. And that's where I feel like LinkedIn is coming in with like our end days, our lift up days, our well-being days where, you know, two Fridays out of every month, you know, there's no meetings, no interviews. So it gives people who are new to LinkedIn and who are onboarding time to, you know, either kind of do some research on their own and, and figure out, you know, skills or uh, things they need to do to do their day-to-day -day work right. or network and branch out within, you know, LinkedIn and find their community, right, with the affinity groups or, or just with any kind of uh, group at LinkedIn that they want to be connected to. Um, at least two Fridays of every month, you know, your schedule will be clear of, of meetings and uh, interviews. So, you know, like I said, you can just hop on a, a coffee chat with your colleague, catch up, you know, try to uh, network that way. Okay. Uh, so that, that's one of the things we're doing to try to, you know, offset a little bit of the, you know, silo approach with everything remote. Uh, to try to, you know, keep the schedule open on Fridays, allow employees to connect with each other in a more casual uh, kind of conversation. Um, so that's one thing, the work-life balance, I would say LinkedIn is really, uh, is a strength for LinkedIn. Uh, work-life balance, um, we have discretionary time off. Um, the 4th of July week here, we have the full week off, company-wide shutdown. Uh, the, at the end of the year, we have a company-wide shutdown for a whole week. So this is paid time off um, for all employees at the company. Um, we have uh, like perk up benefits where you can expense like a gym membership or massages or, um, you know, just things for your health and wellness. You have like an account where you can expense things um, and get reimbursed for that. Um, so I would say those are some of the things we're doing to kind of add value and separate ourselves uh, from the rest as far as like work-life balance goes and perks for employees. So you've covered that, the, those that are 
coming into the business, i.e. streamlining the interview process, which I think is such a mahoosive topic. Um, but I agree and I'm cheering you because I think it's good to be in depth. And I think, you know, there's always going to be this element of you need a human touch during an interview process. But very often we can scupper it and we can make it ridiculously long for no reason. So I think that's yeah. something we can all learn from. But then you're talking about that retention of the talent that you've actually then spent all that money and time getting into the business and looking after people i like the, the friday option i think that's a really good idea where you know this kind of water cooler how are you doing let's catch up you know internal customers are just as important right. yep. I like that. Well, yep two fridays of every month lift up days well-being days no meeting fridays mm. um so again just a good time to catch up network um yep. or like i said if, if you need some extra time to kind of research and uh, figure out, um, you know, how to stay on top of your workload. It just keeps, you know, at least two Fridays of every month. It's very open. proactive, actually. It's not a reactive policy. That that's quite a brave strategy. Are you all in the office? Are you hybrid? How? What's the start? The state? So uh, some offices are open. Um, it's hard to keep up with the different levels. I think they're like almost to fully open, right? right. So it's like uh, I, I know Sunnyvale is open. People are in the office. LinkedIn has New York, Chicago, a couple of different offices around the U.S. They have international ones too. Um, yeah, LinkedIn has international ones too. Um, but yeah, I, we're slowly getting back to um, you know meeting in person and, and teams coming into the office. Um, I'm in some Zoom meetings where they are in the office. You know, it's like a hybrid meeting where you know some people are in the office. Those are that are remote are on Zoom. Right. Um, so, so it is starting to come together as far as uh, employees returning back to the office. Yeah. Mostly a hybrid reproach now, um, but a lot of lot of employees are still remote and we still have that option to work remote. Um, so just kind of taking it slow, kind of letting people, you know, uh, figure out what's best for them, right? Where do you, and, and again, that's one of the things that I think is setting LinkedIn apart is, you know, the message is where do you do your best work, right? Yeah. Do you feel more inspired coming into the office? We'll come come into the office. Do you do better, you know, kind of heads down, working remote at home and just, you know, focusing on your work, you know, do that. So it's like wherever you do your best work and whatever you feel most comfortable with, um, LinkedIn wants to provide that for you. So mm -hmm. I feel like, again, that's like a step above for us to just allow employees to work wherever they feel best to get the work done this is the new normal isn't it this is it now you know even if we go back into a lockdown which god forbid we did across the world if there was another pandemic or god or if there's a war you know we are all capable now of working remotely i love what you've just said there where do you think you will work best but that's that's putting you know that's empowering your employees that's sort of really trusting and accountable um, but all the things that good employees should be doing. So I love that that's your best practice. Now, I, ha I can't have you on and not ask you this question. And I have to prepare you for it. But it's the biggest topic of anyone when you talk about LinkedIn. What's going on with the algorithms? Why do they keep changing it? And can you tell us the secret formula, please? I don't have any secret formulas. I'm sure those are confidential. Oh, yeah, so I don't have access to any of that. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with the algorithms. Uh, I, I'm not technical enough to understand all that. I'm just, I'm non-tech in tech. So, you know, that, you that's, too, I presume if they change the algorithm, it affects you if you're on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any information on anything like that. So, you know, I, I don't. He doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't know everybody. I'm, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. It's fine. I, I'm like I say. I presume you're in the same boat as every listener that we all think we know what the algorithm is because at the moment you need to be doing X, Y, Z, and then a month later you're like, that's not working anymore. What's going on with the algorithm on LinkedIn? So I think if you knew, then you probably have to sign a secret service or something. <laughs> now, obviously, as we record this in the bubble of 2022, um, somebody might be listening to this in the future or beyond, which I hope they will be doing. What do you think is in store for for recruiters to ensure that they're mapping out those talent markets? Because most most markets are talent short, particularly in tech. But obviously, most markets are talent short. So, what do you see as the future? I mean, are you talking? Are you using things like TikTok? Are there any apps that you're using yourself that we need to be mindful of as we look at future talent pools for Generation Z and Generation A, which is the newbies coming through? Right. 
Um, great question. As we as we move into the future and uh, you know remote opportunities, um, yeah, I would just say uh, things like TikTok, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, you know, uh, GitHub. Um, there's all kinds of applications and websites where you can create and build your presence, right, and uh, make yourself available to employees. Um, so I. There's no telling where it could go, I feel like, with, with the amount of apps and the amount of networking and communications we have available to us. Um, I guess my advice would be to focus on a couple that you're most comfortable, familiar with, right? The ones that you know how to operate or maybe you just enjoy the interface of the website or application. Um, you know, focus on some that you really enjoy and maybe try to, you know, really stand out in those applications where you know if you try to keep up with maybe 10 of them then it's like maybe you're sacrificing quality there right so it's like pick maybe two or three of them um really focus in on those ones that you enjoy um and try to build your network and, and build your presence that way which is why linkedin dominates because that's where most people are let's right. be, you have to be where your audience is i mean I, i've been on instagram for years but i've I forgot about, I don't know, 2,000 followers and I, I mainly just share pictures of my food on there. And, <laughs> you know, I do, I do share work stuff on there, certainly now my TikToks and everything. But I think, I think that's actually really sound advice because we've seen things come and go. Um, yeah. And obviously you've got the audio provision now, you know, you've got your live events on LinkedIn. So I think generally if you're in a professional services sector listening to this, I think you're still probably going to be stuck over on LinkedIn. But just keep, an, maybe your advice, keep an eye on what's going on. Right. Have a eye. Have yeah, I always kind of stay tuned to the trends, kind of yeah. you know, stay involved with, um, you know, where things are trending and where the market's yeah. trending. Yeah. Um, but, you know, keep your strengths, your strengths. Right. So very good. Very, very good advice. Well, look, from the depths of Lancashire, where it's so cold here, I have to have a blanket around me to I don't know if it is it sunny in Ohio as we record this. Is it yeah, gonna it's, it's like 70s, 70s and sunny. So we're back. turning over to summer. Yeah, it's the heat back here. That would be I'd be in a bikini right now. So <laughs> we've we've loved listening to you. And I imagine there's going to be a hell of a lot of uh, profile views of you after this episode. But we are so grateful and it's been really enjoyable. And I, I have found it really insightful and I hope our audience has too. So thank you for joining us on the Recruiters Recruitment Podcast. Anytime. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.